If you clicked on this video, chances are you have some questions about the third trimester of pregnancy, labor and delivery, and what to expect. Or maybe you're just curious, that's okay too. I am three weeks postpartum and I know going into the last half of my third trimester and the labor and delivery process, I had tons of anxiety and questions about what to expect as a first time mom. So today I wanna to answer some questions about nutrition, fitness, the third trimester in general, and the labor and delivery process and how to stay comfortable and just some other common questions that you might be wondering if you're also a first time mom. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, hello and welcome. My name is Katie. I'm a registered dietitian and certified personal trainer and I specialize in PCOS and women's health specifically and hormone health in general. So if that's something that interests you, then definitely check out the other videos on this channel to see if you'd be interested in subscribing. Without further ado, let's get into the 20 questions, starting with 10 questions about the third trimester of pregnancy. Also, if you hear some... <laughs> Also, if you hear some adorable little grunts and coos in the background, that is Leo. He is a very noisy sleeper, but he's sleeping right next to me right now. Hi, Bubby. He is honestly the sweetest little guy on earth, and me and Glenn are very lucky parents. Okay, so first question of the third trimester questions is how did you feel physically during your third trimester? During the third trimester, I definitely felt, I would say the most physical aches and pains of all the three trimesters. The first trimester was definitely, I would say the worst in terms of just feeling like crap. I had a lot of food aversions. I couldn't eat a lot of meat or a lot of food in general because I felt pretty nauseous the whole time. And I just didn't feel like myself. I felt really, really tired. I remember one of the videos that I uploaded on this channel, I was telling you guys that. And I was like, man, I just don't feel like myself. I feel so exhausted, unmotivated and all that. And it was because I was pregnant and I didn't know it yet. So I would say the third trimester, I felt okay mentally. I'm a little more tired than normal, but physically I dealt with a lot of the the thunder crotch pains. Um, walking was a lot more difficult at the end of the third trimester because obviously just not even like my physical stomach per se, but the pains that I felt in my pelvis and in my hips, I would randomly get like these intense um, shooting pains. Like my muscle was being pulled like right near my pelvis and my hip bone, like where your you know, pelvis attaches to your leg in, in the front section. I should probably know like what ligaments are there, but I don't off the top of my head. But that would randomly hurt. I would just be like standing or walking. I didn't have to even exert myself and that would hurt. That was definitely the biggest physical thing for me. But to be honest, I exercised until about two weeks up until my due date. So I feel like I was still physically able to do a lot of the same things. It was just having to maneuver in a little bit of a different way and make sure that I was moving in a smart way and not just like jerking up from the couch or from the bed or something like that. Um, but overall, I feel like I was pretty lucky in that I didn't feel a ton of intense pain. It was pretty manageable. Next question, did your cravings or aversions change compared to earlier trimesters? Yes, so I mentioned it a little bit in the first question, but I would say the first trimester I had the worst food aversions, mostly things like meat, things that kind of gave a, a smell when cooking, like literally anything that uh, gave any sort of aroma during cooking made me want to barf. and. In terms of food cravings, a little bit at the beginning, I would crave things that were very salty, but I wouldn't say I had any like really weird cravings. Like some people describe like ice cream and pickles, nothing like that. I wish honestly that I could maybe say something more interesting, but not a whole lot of like specific cravings in the first trimester or even like the second trimester, not really um, anything crazy. My food aversions definitely got better in the second trimester, but still no like really intense cravings beyond getting a little more of an appetite in the second trimester. In the third trimester, 
I started to have intense cravings for specifically ice cream, Frosties from Wendy's, and also popsicles. Like I probably had hundreds of popsicles from the third trimester on up until my due date because I don't know, I just, craved them like crazy. And I will say from a dietitian perspective, that was probably a sign that I was pretty iron deficient at that time. I did get diagnosed with iron deficiency in the second trimester, so it kind of makes sense. But yeah, I could not get enough popsicles and Wendy's Frosties. Those were definitely my biggest cravings. Oh, and one more craving that I noticed, I really, really, really wanted anything that was like citrusy, like lemons, limes, even orange kind of stuff, but mostly lemons and limes for some reason. I really wonder if that was related to the iron deficiency because vitamin C actually helps you absorb iron better. So that would just logically make a lot of sense if that were why I craved both of those things. But nonetheless, and if I didn't mention it, usually you crave ice and things like that when you're iron deficient. So. Just a fun little uh, observation, but those were my main cravings. What supplements were you taking during your third trimester and why? So in my third trimester, the supplement that I was taking was the Smarty Pants Gummy Vitamins, the prenatal, mostly because I really couldn't tolerate uh, swallowing pills during pregnancy. I just didn't feel like, you know, you have to pick and choose your battles sometimes. And I just felt like I was not going to be as consistent with something that wasn't in gummy form. And so I looked up the most high quality third party tested gummy and that was the Smarty Pants gummy. And also in my second and third trimester, I took the Floridix, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, iron supplement. It's a liquid form of iron, but it's more easily absorbable and it's also easier on the stomach because a lot of times if you take iron in pill form, you'll find that it can cause a great amount of nausea, which I, again, did not want to deal with in my second and third trimester because you have enough to deal with during that time. So I just chose to take the liquid form because I had heard a lot of good things about it and I really didn't have any problems with it. Initially, the flavor is kind of like odd. I would say like raisin water is about the closest thing that I could describe it to. Um, it's not the greatest, but it's also not the worst. And I recommend taking a swig of water after you take the liquid iron or any other form of liquid iron because it helps get the metallic taste off your tongue. Otherwise, you'll notice that you'll probably feel like, like you have a penny on your tongue. It's kind of weird, but it's just something that comes with taking an iron supplement. So those are the only things that I took during pregnancy. I tried not to take too many supplements because I was just concerned with anything that might interfere with my pregnancy or be contraindicated in any sort of way. So I was really, really cautious with the supplements that I took. And real quick postpartum, I wanted to show you what I'm taking now. I will have another video going in more depth on this. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section below. But right now I am taking a non-gummy formula and it's actually for postpartum. It's the Mom Multi Support Pack, but Parallel also has supplements for the first, second, and third trimester of pregnancy. They are a fantastic company. And honestly, I wish I would have found out about them earlier in my pregnancy because I definitely would have taken their supplements if I did know about them earlier on. But this supplement pack has a multivitamin that contains iron in it. It also has an omega-3 fatty acid supplement in it, a beauty blend that has biotin and collagen, and then a stress support blend that has ashwagandha and L-theanine, which is an amino acid that's known to be good for the brain and for relieving stress. So that is what I am taking alongside I am starting to take Ovacetol 
which is good for blood sugar management and blood sugar balance, lowering testosterone levels if you have PCOS, and regulating your cycle, which I have been known to have a history of an irregular cycle. And I also have a history of reactive hypoglycemia. So this is something that I've been really wanting to get started on and it is safe for pregnancy. But again, I didn't really wanna take anything super new during my pregnancy because I was just being overly cautious, but it is known to be safe to take during pregnancy. So it is shown to be good for gestational diabetes and prevention of gestational diabetes if you take it during pregnancy. So that is a very positive thing about Ovacetol. How did you manage discomfort or common third trimester symptoms? Hmm. Symptom wise, I would say the biggest discomfort that I felt was the pelvic pain and the thunder crotch or lightning crotch or whatever they call it. And I think with those, it was really just listening to my body. So if I started to feel tired, if I started to feel any muscle tension or muscle aches coming on, or my pelvis started feeling weird during a walk, I would just head back home or I would sit down on the couch if I were at home already. Definitely just stopping when intuitively my body was telling me to stop was the biggest thing <laughs> and that sounds super simple and you know maybe way too simple to be true but that's what worked for me and I'm a very sensitive type. I don't try to push past discomfort when I know it's not right for my body. That sounds really bad, like I'm way too much of a weenie to handle any sort of pain. I don't mean <laughs> that per se, but I do mean I was just really adamant on, okay, this feels wrong. I'm going to listen to that feeling and lean into it and just lean into rest right now. And trust me, that was really hard as someone who is uh, very much like a go, go, go type of person. Like I of course lean into my intuition, but I also sometimes um, push past things mentally and try to do too much. And so on the mental side of things too, I think I just tried to be more easy on myself during pregnancy. Were there any specific exercises or stretches that helped with third trimester aches and pains? The biggest thing for me at the end was doing some really, really gentle yoga. Like, so no inversions or any crazy things besides the baby flipping uh, poses that I did do to flip my baby because he was in breech position at 31 weeks. So I did do a couple inversions for that. But after that, in the third trimester, low lunges, child's pose, and anything that was gently gonna stretch that inner thigh muscle, I'm trying to think of what else. Using the yoga ball was really nice. So doing some hip circles and just kind of sitting there and bouncing on the yoga ball helped to relieve some of that pelvic pain that I talked about. So I would say just anything really, really simple and easy and that stretched out the inner thigh was the best thing for me. I also was doing my friend Justina Ericole's pregnancy program or prenatal program. She has exercises catered to first, second, and third trimester that includes strength training and also cardio. And her program was fantastic. She is a functional fitness expert and she is phenomenal at what she does and I have to say her exercises were the perfect middle ground between pushing me hard enough and not being so hard that I got injured or I felt exhausted at the end of it but also like not so easy that I didn't feel like I was doing any exercise. Of course, everyone has a different pregnancy experience. So again, listen to your body. If you are not doing so hot, you wanna do some easier exercises. If you're doing better like I was doing, then feel free to do what your body feels good with. But for me, I would say her program helped me continue to feel strong and mobile and able to get up from the couch, up from bed, which sounds like simple things, but these are things that get really difficult when you are in your third trimester and growing and you have intense back pain and stuff like that. I felt like I was able to handle all the aches and pains much better because I was stronger and keeping up with my exercise during that. So highly recommend her program and I'll leave it below 
if you are interested in it. I'm also doing her postnatal program, so I'll let you know how I do with that, but I'm really excited to get started. What were your go-to clothing items or maternity wear for the third trimester? I definitely had some go-to clothing items that were on repeat, especially at the end when I was getting really big. So the first thing, and I think the most essential thing was actually a really affordable option that I got from Walmart. Walmart's kind of upping their game in the clothing department. They're starting to get closer to Target status, but not quite. But they had these shorts that were in the junior section that actually had like an elastic band. They were denim shorts, but you know, stretchy at the top. So no button or anything like that. And those fit me from the first trimester all the way to the third trimester. So super, super impressive. I was wearing the shorts actually the day I went into labor. So if that gives you any idea of how versatile these shorts were, I think I did size up in at least one of these shorts, um, but I got a couple pairs. And then I also got some yoga shorts that I just sized up on that were really cheap and really thin material that worked really well for like pajama pants. And then in terms of other bottoms, I used a lot of leggings when I wasn't doing the shorts, but to be honest, I used the shorts a majority of the time. Um, I also had some maternity yoga shorts that were really, really short, but I used them for kind of indoor workouts where I wanted to be cool, but <laughs> you know, I didn't care who was looking because no one was looking because I was alone in my house. And then for t-shirts and stuff like that, I got some maternity shirts that were work appropriate for um, a pretty affordable price from Mercari. I actually just ordered a bundle of like 20 <laughs> shirts and that lasted me my entire pregnancy. So that's what I did for tops. And I used a lot of my oversized shirts for a majority of the time too, those still fit um, because I'm kind of a relaxed kind of gal. Like I don't, I don't wear like super tight clothes a lot of the time, at least um, not on the top portion of my body. So I did have a lot of things that still fit. How did you stay comfortable while sleeping in the third trimester? Okay, I love this question because I have a a very, very serious answer for you, and that is the maternity pillow. You cannot be a pregnant lady and not get the pregnancy pillow or maternity pillow or whatever they call it. This thing is literally the best thing that I've ever done for my sleep, and I'm serious about that. So I actually ordered it before I knew I was pregnant because I have a YouTuber that I follow that recently had a kid and was talking about how amazing this pregnancy pillow was. And so I decided to try it out because I don't necessarily have bad sleep, but I definitely struggle with getting comfortable sometimes and I love to maximize my comfort. So I tried it out before pregnancy and absolutely loved it. I think the biggest thing is having a little cushion between my knees and then also having kind of, it's, it's kind of like a C-shaped pillow. So I'd have one part between my knees and then I'd have kind of one part to squeeze uh, like a little stuffed animal almost, like a, like a kid with a stuffed animal. Um, but it's the best sleep I've ever had. And I honestly didn't have any hard time sleeping when I was pregnant. Maybe a couple nights related to some weird hormone dreams, but in terms of comfort physically, I was doing pretty good, all things considered. I did also have someone pass down a wedge pillow for me um, as well, which I'm thankful for. I'm kind of thankful that I didn't buy it myself though, because I only used it here and there when I was having really bad heartburn because it helps you be at more of an angle on your bed. So you're not putting all your weight on your, all the weight isn't going like on one side of your stomach or anything like that. Um, because typically you're laying on your side when you're pregnant, but it can get really hard uh, to be comfortable at the end because it feels like like your belly, the weight is going to one side and then you start to feel like a weird kind of stitch in your side and muscle pain there. There's also pillows that help reduce that wedge as well that are smaller. All that to say, I highly recommend pillows, pillows, pillows when you're pregnant because you 
absolutely won't regret it. There's more like minimalistic pillows that some people prefer over the one that I like, but I have no problems with my big giant C-shaped pillow. I prefer it, but definitely just get what's right for you. Just don't skimp out on a pregnancy pillow because you will not regret it. Did you experience any unusual or unexpected symptoms or sensations? Nothing that I didn't totally expect because I did use a lot of videos on YouTube and blog articles and stuff like that to learn about what to expect. And I used an app that was really, really good at telling me what to expect with each and every month. Let me look at what that is called because I highly recommend it, especially if you're a first time mom, because for me, I wanted something that was gonna tell me what was gonna happen and what to expect because I'm an anxious gal, but not fear monger me or not make me feel like super anxious. Hey, Bubby. <laughs> He's awake now. The app is called Baby Center. Highly recommend downloading that if you're a first time mom. It's got a lot of great information and I didn't feel like it caused any extra anxiety for me. It just kind of tells you how big your baby is and what you can expect week to week for both your baby's growth and what's happening with your baby inside of you. And then also symptoms that you might anticipate or expect as a pregnant lady at X or Y week. What self-care practices were most helpful in the third trimester? Again, I think the biggest thing for me was just resting when I felt like my body needed it and staying hydrated and walking. Those were the three main things. They're very simple, but things that we can easily neglect if we are a pregnant lady who is you know, trying to be all the things while you were preparing <laughs> and uh, growing your little one in your belly. Now on to our labor and delivery questions. Hopefully these are helpful. I'm no labor and delivery expert or anything like that, but I will just share my experience and some of the things that happened and helped me stay comfortable during the whole process. First question is, how did you know you were in labor? What were the signs? So the beginning of the story is that my parents drove in from Illinois to be with us during the process of labor and delivery. So they came on a Friday night and this was the 25th of August. So they got here in the evening and we were all just kind of sitting around talking, unpacking their stuff and having a pretty normal casual night, right? This was the night before my due date, but I didn't quite feel like anything was different or like anything was about ready to happen like in the next day or two, I kind of felt like I was gonna be late uh, or past my due date actually. Um, so we all just went to bed and everything was normal. I didn't feel weird. I did have this like weird feeling that was again, kind of just my gut or intuition. Before I went to bed, I was like, I feel like I should have a snack. I know it's like 10.30 and usually I don't eat that late at night, but I was like, I need a snack. So I had a, you know, I listened to my body and I had a snack before bed. Me and Glenn went to bed. Everything was casual, normal, uh, nothing out of the ordinary, right? Then in the middle of the night, I was soundly sleeping and all of a sudden mid dream, I felt this pop, it was like a balloon pop. And I sprung up in bed and sat forward, sat up and felt gush, 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 like just water everywhere. And I basically started like beating on Glenn saying, oh my God, oh my God, move, move, move. I have to go to the bathroom. My water just broke. And according to the doctor, unlike what TV shows convey, your water may or may not break uh, before your contractions actually start. But mine definitely did before any sort of pain started. So I was definitely like, oh shoot. <laughs> I sat in the bathroom and I was like, this is it. I'm gonna start being in some severe pain very soon. And I was trying to be like as 
mentally and physically ready for that as as possible, but I have to admit, I was definitely scared of the childbirth process going into it and just kind of terrified of like what was gonna happen. I had a couple minutes go by, probably like 10, 15 minutes where Glenn was calling our midwife and seeing what we should do. And essentially they told us that we should wait, I think it was six to 12 hours or so, and then come in when we feel the contractions are closer together, the 511 rule they said, or really at any point, because since my water broke, they weren't gonna turn me away if I went to the doctor at that point, or if I went to the hospital at that point. So I went back to bed and I did start feeling the contractions start. <laughs> you silly boy. So I did go back to bed and I started feeling the contractions um, probably 15, 20 minutes later. And they started off like period cramps kind of, which I am very, very accustomed to. And they were tolerable, but then they definitely got worse and worse and worse after a while. And they, by the time, I think it was seven or eight in the morning, this all started at 3.30 a.m. by the way. So by the time it was six, 7.30 in the morning, I was basically like telling Glenn, I don't care how close together my contractions are. I need to go to the hospital because I cannot bear this uh, very much longer. This is debilitating. And um, I just, I just, I don't, I don't want to do this at home anymore. <laughs> so that's kind of the intro to how my labor and delivery process started. What was your birth plan and did it go as expected? Um, I didn't have like that crazy of a plan, I would say, just essentially that I did want to use an epidural. I, I'm not like most YouTubers out there. I did want to have the epidural because I just felt like knowing myself that having the epidural and having that pain relief was going to make me more equipped for the birthing process and lower my anxiety and stress levels. So all along I wanted an epidural, but I didn't really have any other crazy requests um, beyond that, I, I trusted the doctors to make decisions that were medically in my favor, but obviously I wanted to have vaginal birth and have the epidural, but not have any crazy medical interventions that weren't totally necessary. Did you have any memorable or unexpected moments during labor and delivery? The most memorable thing for me, I think, was during the pushing process. There was a point in time where Glenn told me kind of afterwards that the baby's blood pressure was dropping and we needed to get him out ASAP because there was the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck. And I don't wanna fear monger or scare anybody, but that's all I'll say about that. It, apparently it is very normal for that to happen and that it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, everything is going to hell in a handbasket. Like it just, you know, is something that can happen commonly in birth. So at that point though, even though no one directly was telling me that this is happening, they were probably like, this bitch is anxious. Like we don't need to make her any more anxious than she already is. Um, but there was a point in the pushing process where the nurse looked at me and she was like, Katie, your baby needs you right now. I need you to push harder. And she was really, really coaching me to push harder. And the doctor was telling me, you know, good job. Good job. You're doing amazing. That was a great push. And then the nurse, you know, kind of good cop, bad cop. The nurse was saying, push harder. You can do this. I know you can. No, push harder. And so I was getting both sides, which I felt like was the perfect mix for me because I am a very sensitive person, but at the same time, I'm really in need of strong, confident, and direct people in my life. I tend to be very attracted friend-wise and, you know, my significant other is very much like this. I'm, I'm attracted to people who are very confident, bold, and open, and being very direct with me and with other people. I feel like that's because it balances me out really well because I am sometimes very uh, non-confrontational and meek and not bold. So I like to have that balance. But anyway, that was like something that stood out to me. And eventually, by the way, you know, not to skip the uh, 
ending of that story, but we eventually got him out and he was perfectly fine, perfectly healthy, and everything was normal and he was delivered very safely. I didn't need a C-section. He didn't need any other interventions. He was perfectly fine. But that was a memorable moment for me because I just felt like in that moment, I really knew by the tone of her voice that she was absolutely serious and that my baby really did need me. And right before that moment, I had recollection of a YouTube video that I watched that said like, if you feel like you're about to give up or that you can't tolerate the pain anymore, then most likely that means that you're almost done and that you almost got this baby out. And so in that moment when she was telling me push harder, push harder, I really did feel like I couldn't tolerate the pain anymore. And I felt like I'm like, oh my God, like I can't have this baby. Like they're gonna have to like pry it out of me. Like, I don't know how to do this any longer and then I reminded myself okay this means I'm almost done my baby is almost here and I can always push a little bit harder literally and figuratively to get my baby into this world safely so that was just a really memorable moment for me and something that really helped me realize how strong I actually was and that I wasn't just a big weenie <laughs> um, and just this sensitive person that I always kind of credit myself for. Like I, I am a strong person too. And that's why it was so memorable for me. What advice do you have for managing labor pains and staying calm during contractions? Okay, so I'm no expert at this, but I will say that listening to guided meditations is really helpful. Listen to your gut. Like if you wanna do a natural birth, that's amazing. There's so many women out there that, that do a natural birth and that do a lot of like the hypnobirthing, like meditations and breathing techniques and stuff like that that help manage pain. I am not one of those people. And so, so I felt like the epidural was the right decision for me. For a little bit of time, I kind of had like a back and forth with my nurse. Like I was scared to, they give you a little button to like increase the epidural um, if you're still feeling pain during the process. And I was kind of hesitant to keep putting more in because I kept getting really anxious on whether or not that was healthy or a good thing or negative for me or my baby but the nurse convinced me otherwise. And so that's just my experience um, is that I wish I would have just like trusted that I can push the button when I need the button and that's what it's there for. It's to help relieve some pain and anxiety during the process so I can save that energy for pushing. How did your partner support and contribute to your labor and delivery experience? Glenn was of course with me the entire time counting the time between contractions and stuff like that initially. And then of course he drove me to the hospital and stayed with me the entire time. And he was very good at like asking me what I needed ahead of time and during. And basically <laughs> I just kind of said like, I just need you to be here for me. I don't really need you to coach me on anything or tell me anything. I just need you to be there. And that's that was honestly the truth. I He told me that like, in the initial stage of labor, when I didn't have the epidural, that I was at, at one point like a feral almost and shut the whole world out and wasn't really talking a whole lot. And, and that's how he knew I was in a ton of pain. Um, and it was very much true. I, I really couldn't hear a whole lot of what other people were saying to me. Uh, at one point, one of the nurses was like asking me for my social security number when we initially checked in. And I was like, <sighs> Like, give me five, okay, I can't answer right now. So obviously what you need is gonna be different depending on what type of person you are, but in that moment, um, and even during the pushing process, Glenn was telling me like, you were awesome. You just focused and didn't say a word and didn't whine or complain or like yell at me or do anything. You just kind of like focused in and pushed and breathed and pushed and like got it done. and. That's, that is definitely how it happened. Like definitely like the mode I was in, they said it would take two to three hours to push for my first baby. And it took me one and a half hours to push him out. So I was very motivated to get him out as soon as possible. I did not want to be pushing longer than I needed to because that was definitely the most intense part of the whole process. Yeah, recommend 
practicing your breathing exercises and like how to uh, contract the muscles in your abdomen to kind of like help with pushing ahead of time because that is what helped me the most. Are there any specific techniques or strategies that you use during labor? So yes, I was almost about to say that, or I just alluded to that just a second ago, I would look into um, proper breathing techniques for pregnant women and for the pushing process because I really felt like practicing ahead of time was really beneficial for me to be in that mindset and to push faster when I was actually doing it. Because like G Glenn was telling me too during the pushing process that I was pushing so hard that like my lips were turning blue when I pushed. Um, so it's not a fun process, but you'll get through it. What was your initial reaction when you finally met your baby? Yes, so I was just, I don't know, I thought that I would cry instantly in that moment, but I think I was so exhausted mentally and physically that I just kind of like held him on my chest and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is my little guy. Like I was really, really excited obviously and so was Glenn and it was a surreal moment. It was crazy to give birth to a human for the first time. I, it's a feeling that I've never ever felt in my life. Um, so it was a crazy feeling and I was probably a little bit in shock as well. <laughs> so I want to say something like beautiful and eloquent, um, but I was a little bit like exhausted and in shock from everything that just happened. So initially I was just so happy that he was finally in the world and that he was safe and that we were both safe, honestly. He has been the sweetest, best baby on earth. I love him so, so much. And he's got such a sweet, adorable face. I don't know what to say other than we were so excited and we are still excited and lucky to have him and watch him grow. It's, it's a surreal moment and a surreal experience having a kid for the first time. <laughs> Bub <laughs> wants to contribute to this conversation. How did you choose your baby's name and does it have a special meaning? So my baby's name is Leo. Right now we call him Bubby um, because he's so cute, but I don't think it had really a huge special meaning to it. <laughs> Hi, Bubby. Oh, are you waking up? I wouldn't say it had a special meaning to it. I am a Leo in the zodiac sign. Leo himself is a Virgo, so that part doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I felt like since I'm a Leo, I can name my kid Leo, no problem. So um, no special meaning, but when we came across the name, we just both agreed, me and Glenn both agreed on it instantly and felt like it was the right pick. Um, and we were both really picky about guy names, so it just kind of fell together like that. His middle name is Julian. I initially really liked the name Julian, but Glenn didn't like it as a first name, but liked it as a middle name. So Leo Julian is his uh, name, which I am very happy about. <laughs> what was the first week like postpartum for you and your baby? Not a lot of sleep. Initially out of the hospital, I had tons and tons of anxiety about breastfeeding and making sure that he was getting enough. Um, I was having a little bit of a struggle with breastfeeding at the first couple of days um, and my milk wasn't in until probably the fourth or fifth day. So I was absolutely beside myself uh, with anxiety with that. But what I did was triple feed per the nurse and doctor's recommendations. So essentially is when you try to latch them, get the colostrum or whatever they can, um, and then you pump and kind of stimulate the breast to get the process going. And then you also bottle feed them with formula to make sure they're getting enough in physically. So that was the most exhausting thing ever. I'm, I'm so glad that my milk eventually came in um, because it's been a really great bonding experience for us to do breastfeeding. I didn't know if I was for sure gonna do breastfeeding at the beginning, but I really, really am glad that I chose to do that now. But yeah, first week was a struggle with that but we were excited to have him home at the same time. And then also um, make sure just you're sleeping as much as humanly possible because he was feeding probably every hour and a half to two hours and that was a lot. But it's, it's we're kind of finding our routine with things this month and then we're gonna find a new routine once I start work. So it is what it is, the newborn phase is only temporary, so.
I'm trying to keep that in mind and just embrace the moment and enjoy things in the newborn phase while he's still in it. And the last one is what advice do you have for new moms entering the postpartum phase? My best advice is to get as much sleep as possible, have your partner or whoever you can help out so you can sleep and so you can take care of yourself, um, go to the bathroom and, you know, drink water and stuff like that. And one of the things that really helped was our neighbors actually meal prepped us some like breakfast burritos and some pasta and things like that that we could freeze and use as meals. So that is so, so helpful. So if you have friends or family that are asking like what they can do to help you, tell them to buy you food or to cook you food and send it your way because I will tell you eating is a really, really hard thing to do um, the first couple of weeks especially. Also continue to take your prenatal after into the postpartum. Again, I highly recommend Parallel, not sponsored or anything like that. I just really love their product. They have the Mom Multi Support Pack that is specifically catered for postpartum. And you really wanna continue taking this if you're breastfeeding, especially because your baby is also taking in nutrients from your breast milk. So you require more when you are breastfeeding, especially, um, but also to avoid things like postpartum depression, which can very much happen. I know I was concerned about that for myself because I have a predisposition of anxiety and depression. So taking care of yourself nutritionally is gonna take care of you mentally as well and help you sleep better and just feel better in general so you can take care of your baby to the best of your ability and take care of yourself too. So I hope this Q&A was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any topics that you want me to cover in a future video. And thank you so much for hanging out with me here on YouTube. If you wanna continue hanging out here on the channel, then I have a video that I think you'll love right up here on the screen. Click or tap the screen to head on over to the next video. Bye guys.